Okay, so this is my third attempt at this. I take really good photos of my work, but I kind of suck at making videos. Um, I don't plan them out in the head. I don't write a script to read off of. I don't overdub. I don't splice. I just do one shot, mistakes and all. So bear with me. This is probably going to suck artistically, but it's a demonstration uh, of the Ferries P60 uh, tuba rotary valve swaging tool. Um, there are two ways to, to write and, and pronounce this word that are accepted, and neither of them seems to be correct or incorrect. I was taught swedge, S-W-E-D-G-E, and the other word is swage, S-W-A-G-E, no, no D. Um, Ferry sells it as a swaging tool with an A, and if you're going to look it up on the internet, you have to know how to spell both words because uh, YouTube videos and photographs and all that, uh, some of them don't even use those words. Some of them just say uh, bearing shrinker or something like that. So I'm going to try to post this on YouTube and use all the relevant words in the tags. Uh, I've never tagged one of my videos, but you know, can, how hard can that be? Anyway, up today, my victim, so to speak, is this lovely unidentified rotary valve that it comes in at a very strange size for a rotor at right on 750. So it probably came from a horn about the size of a Marifone 185. I believe it's either an aftermarket uh, Jurgen Voigt valve. It could be a BNS. Uh, I have been told that some of the markings on it look like it could also be an old Minel Weston valve from the 70s. I don't know. I don't care. It was a piece of garbage on my Holton. It rattles horribly. There is so much play in the bearings that they've tarnished over time. This was sealed up until just a minute ago, and they've turned brown because air can get in there, and it's oiled, and it did that. That's pretty bad. Everything is uh, dirty like the day I took it off the horn about six or seven years ago. Um, focus, focus. Focus. Hello. I don't know how to do this. I take pictures better than films. Whatever. Anyway, it's still covered in filth. It has the old oil on it. One of the things I hate about it was that Mr. Rusk decided it would be necessary to put the valve in the lead pipe and then solder that fucker down um, to the horn. So you have to... Uh, well, you, you're stuck with it on there. You have to use a torch to take the valve off so you can open it up and clean it. What kind of thought was that? So it's really hard to clean. It was unbelievably nasty when I got it off the horn. Most of that's just flaked off and dried over time. Um, but in order to oil it, he had to do that to the rear cap so that you could get a needle bottle with a long needle back behind the bell to, to oil the rear bearing. I mean, you got to oil this thing. You got you to gotta do that. You going to play where crap. If it's not oiled, especially as loud as this thing is, it's really loose. Um, I don't have a camera stand. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to have to set you down for a second. And uh, not really sure. I guess there's not going to be much of a picture for a second. Let me just set the camera down. And I'm going to let you hear. This is not vertical end play like what you would use with a mirror phone set screw to keep the thing from bobbing up and down this is horizontal play this is side to side this thing is really loud when i operate it it works as a fifth valve if you put really heavy oil on it because the fifth valve doesn't need to have lightning fast technique and it doesn't get used very often to be honest so uh it can be a little slow and heavy, and it can, uh, you know, it can have leaky bearings if you put in heavy oil. You can put up with a lot on a four-piston, one rotary valve horn from a worn-out rotor. If it's supposed to be one of the main four on a rotary valve tuba, though, that's completely unacceptable. You can't have your valves making that much noise. That top bearing is just bogusly loose. Anyway, so I'm going to clean this thing up. You can see it used to have the cork plate this way, and he stopped one of the holes really poorly, by the way. It's just a screw, and he just chopped it off. It's 
these are all going to get drilled out and filled, or that one's going to get unscrewed, and the extra holes are going to be filled with hard solder. I'm going to braze them shut. Anyway, then he cut those two holes, and that's what it uses now as a fifth valve with the lever coming from the side, and uh, that works pretty good. Still not sure what I'm going to do with this. I'm probably, so it matches the other stuff, I'm probably going to buff and sand off all this silver plate, which is in kind of mediocre shape anyway, and uh, get it down to bare brass. And in the process, it looks to me, this is not plated on the inside, it looks like, like Miraphone, the top plate is nickel silver, which is good. And I'm pretty sure that the rear cap is also nickel silver underneath the silver plate because it's silver inside and it's not the same as the silver plating. You can see where the silver is in there and it's flaked off and it's silver underneath. So it's going to look like all my Miraphone valves being uh, raw brass with nickel silver top and bottom parts. I may leave this alone because I don't know if this is brass or not. I could scrape the back to find out. If it's brass, it's going to stay this way because the plating, though it's ugly, can easily be polished up. And that'll match the nickel silver cork plates on the Miraphone valves that I have. The screws were all threaded. These are Miraphone screws, all of these. They don't go with this tuba. They don't go with any other tuba that I know of other than Miraphone. So I don't know what to think about that, except that he used uh, an old beater valve, cut off both the stop arm and this pivot point, and made these, soldered them on. See, that's brass underneath. That's my linkage arm I made. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to clean it up. And one of the most important things about that cleanup is I'm going to swage this or swedge this down onto the, the stem on the rotor, which is sort of like drawing uh, an outer tube onto an inner tube for a matched telescopic slide tubing set. First, you make the inner tube by drawing it over the mandrel. Then you put another tube over that and you draw that over the inner tube so they fit perfectly. So there we are. So I'll be back in just a little bit. All right, so I'm back. All the parts are clean now. They're sitting in the chemicals for a while. I use vinegar, which is extremely weak. I have muriatic acid, and <clears throat> if this were going to go on a horn, it was as nasty as that. I would have used the muriatic to clean it out, but the vinegar is good enough. Um, so because it's so weak and it's been used in the past, it's blue now. Uh, I'll probably leave that stuff in there for about two hours just because it's disgusting. Um, this is the tool. It's very simple. It's three pieces. Uh, well, six pieces if you count all the other collets. Uh, but the tool itself is just a three-piece affair. It has this handle. Let me get that off there. Well, come on off. And then there is this collet in the middle. This fits into your bench vise. This is the collet that does the pulling. And as you can see, it's just a split three-piece affair like a uh, kind of like a flute head joint expander or something like that except this crushes instead of stretching so this goes in here I don't lube them that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to this face goes against the tool that's the nice neater outer face uh, let's see if I can do this one-handed anyway I need a assistant. Okay, so as you tighten this, it pulls these down. You can see the space. And crimps it shut. Very beautiful. That's how it works. Back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. The parts are uh, pretty clean now. And uh, we have a problem I have to deal with before I can do this. I gently 
the way you're supposed to do it suede's the rear bearing. It's pretty nice now. The front one, however, the tool cannot be locked down straight and flush with the top of the rotor because you can see that damn screw that he plugged the hole with is still there. So I need to remove that before I can go on with this. Back in a minute. Oh, and before I go, I kind of used my rawhide mallet to prop the camera up. I'm going to try to show you just how loose this top bearing is. It's not as bad as I was thinking it is, but it's still pretty loose. See if I can get my hands in here. That's side to side. I can feel it really badly. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that. That's pretty ridiculous. Okay, so now the tool fits on there correctly. Back in a minute. All right, it's uh, crimped down pretty tightly. The rotor no longer moves, which is good. Now I go put a little bit of lapping compound on there after I tap it out with the leather mallet. Ta-da! Anyway, I have to tap that out. Then I have to very lightly lap it. And then uh, just a lot of hand lapping, turning it, turning it, turning it, cleaning it off, adding valve oil until eventually all the lapping compound is gone, and it should end up working perfectly. The other end is also much better than it was. I didn't really tighten down on that much. I have this theory. My Miraphone rotors from the factory, brand new. The rear bearings have a little bit of looseness in them, a little bit of wobble. I think that's by design. I think it's supposed to take up flaws in case this thing takes a swat and bends it, including the collar. The fourth valve on that B-flat parts horn I'm working on, the actual bearing was canted a little bit to the side, just a tiny bit. When I tightened that up, it no longer worked, and it took two hours for me to fix that. So I don't want that very tight. I just want it so it doesn't rattle, which is where it is now. And God, look at all the beatings this thing has taken. I don't know why you would use anything other than a, a wooden dowel to tap these out and in. Somebody over the years used something metal like a screwdriver on this poor abused valve for a long time. And they banged on it here too with a screwdriver. Why would you do that? Anyway, we'll see how this turns out. It might end up being a really good valve. It doesn't leak at the port so bad, but it was leaking here before. So it does leak around the side some, but it's not terrible. Um, but it shouldn't leak here at all when it's oiled. So I don't know. We'll see. Got a lot of cleanup to do this. It'll probably be a while before I'm back. Um, but through the magic of video editing, I'll be back in just one, two, three. All right, so I'm back. I swaged the top bearing. I did a little bit on the bottom bearing, cleaned up the outer appearance somewhat, put it back together. No more rattling. It's, uh, works very well. Ha, <laughs> I can't show you. It spins very freely. I can't show you like that. Um, but there is still vertical end play that I can fix by getting a new cap and tapping and drilling it out for a set screw. It's not much, but it's enough to make it click. Um, but most of the thunking and clunking is gone because there is no side-to-side -side play. It's tight now. And uh, there's a little tiny bit of grinding in there when I spin it freely, when it's not attached to anything. I guess there's a, I don't know, I guess there's a little bit more grid in there that I didn't clean out. I did kind of a half-assed job because I was in a hurry. I just wanted to show this and uh, the results. It's, uh, there is no play at all in this thing side to side. It's tight. I guess you have to take my word for it since I put it back together and I can't show you. That was kind of stupid. Anyway, it is what it is. So now this valve is, valve is ready to be uh, wrapped, it's lubed, it's wrapped, can be wrapped up in tissue paper and then bubble wrap and put in a box and put on the shelf 
uh, the outside of it, I'll label what brand it is, I, or what I think it is. I think this actually may be an Amati or Trevaney older valve. Looking at the thicknesses of the plates, the uh, knurling, the size and location of the circles. Um, the Trevaney horns didn't have big clunky stuff like this. But this is a little nicer than what they usually do, so it, I still think it might be BNS. I don't know. The key, I think, is this. I believe that's original, this domed bit. And I think that he made something to copy that over here. Maybe cut it off another one or something. I don't know. Anyway, if you recognize a stop arm with this kind of a deal on the top, and you know for sure what it is, let me know, because... Uh, I'd like to put this to bed. I think it's v uh, BNS, but it may be Trevaney or Amati. I don't know. It works very well now. I'm very pleased with it. Cleaned it up. Not perfectly, but good enough for me to decide to keep it. So, yeah, there it is. Um, so, I cleaned up the entire valve casing, all the parts, uh, swaged the upper bearing a, a pretty good amount I could have done more and I might uh, the contact patch is about five millimeters and I there's room to get another couple out of that so I might go back and do it again the rear one I just barely did I might tighten that up again some more I don't know but overall it's good it's uh, kind of poorly made which made me think it might be a Mahdi. Like there's silver solder visible underneath here. You don't see that in most cases. They take care of that. I mean, it's globs. Uh, just not as nice as some other valves. Anyway, I guess that's it. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And uh, I guess that's all. Bye.